So in the last segment of our video, in the last part, the part 3 of chapter 4, we looked at how to include uh, this addition as the argument of the calculator parameter inside the function calculate. When we invoked it uh, as a value for our variable cal. Now, what if we wanted to change this and um, have a look at how we can implement this or invoke this inside this uh, inside as the argument of the calculator parameter so let's have a look then we'll be moving on to returning anonymous functions first we'll be uh, looking at how to use anonymous uh, functions as parameter as parameters inside this calculate function so we're going to change this code this uh, calculate declaration function is going to stay the same uh, stay the same but we're going to include it or uh, as a value inside a variable that will actually produce an another anonymous function inside the parameter so it might seem confusing but I'll be explaining as we go along but first let us look at how we can include this subtract inside this third parameter of calculator so let's erase this and let's save this and now we can have a quick look at what the browser will produce so obviously it's producing the correct answer uh, because we actually passed 2 and 4 and so when we pass 2 and 4 the second value in here if you look carefully this par uh, this calculator parameter is being changed into this subtract function so when it is changed into the subtract function automatically it receives the body uh, inside this curly braces the compiler then puts 4 as the second value uh, and 2 as the first value so we have the answer of 2 now let's have a look at how we can use a non an anonymous function inside our calculate function uh, as an argument so first uh, we will need to call uh, we will need to declare a variable so we have looked at addition subtraction now we'll be looking at multiplication so let's invoke the calculate function and let's use a bigger val uh, let's use bigger values for this so we can use 12 and now comes the interesting part basically we had uh, used an an a function that had a name so we had to declare it first with our declare uh, function declaration statement but now we will be using the function expression statement i hope you remember that very uh, very well because the function expression statement will need to be stored inside a variable so we are using the multiplication variable to store the entire thing the entire value of this computation now we will need this function because it's an anonymous function we won't actually require a name so this will become um, a function expression statement now it's time we include the parameters the parameters will be the same as the calculate function because it's going to take the values that we pass along and those values will then get multiplicated with each other now the second parameter will be second val now it's time for the body part because this is a function expression statement this anonymous function is a function expression statement which is being stored as the argument of this calculator parameter so basically what's happening inside this is that so basically what we're doing in here it's like something we are uh, declaring a variable called calculator which will hold a f uh, which will hold an anonymous function like this so it will hold this uh, first where I hope you don't mind because I don't have enough space in here so I'll just shorten the names so I'll, this is the second parameter the second val I, have, I don't have space so I'm writing it here and then uh, it will get the body inside this so I haven't yet written the body but I'll, I'll soon write it so my point of saying is that it's actually this function that we are using in here uh, is actually the value for initializing this calculator variable inside this calculate function so let's add the body of this anonymous function 
you can add as much white spaces as you want because uh, JavaScript won't uh, actually take into account all these white spaces. So, and remember that you must include the semicolon to end your statement because this is an expression statement inside the variable. It needs to have that end uh, end semicolon to tell the compiler that this is the end of the variable. Now let's yeah, call the return keyword and we are going to multiply first val with the second val and let's add the semicolon to end the statement and let's save this uh, so we need to pass this into our alert function now now let's add the variable of multiplication as the argument of for the alert function and here we are and let's save this so this is going to open up the firstcode.html page and here you can see that the JavaScript alert box immediately produces the product of 120 which is which we got by multiplying 10 into 10 with 12 so what's happening in here is that this calculator function uh, inside this calculate function uh, does not have a body so when we pass in this anonymous function as the argument of this calculator function it provides a body for this calculator function so inside this uh, multiplication variable the compiler finds that the calculator function has been provided with the body of first val into with second val and it's this needs to be returned to uh, the variable multiplication so it takes it assigns 10 to the first variable of first val and it assigns 12 to the second val so this first val then gets uh, uh, copied to this first val uh, for the anonymous function and the second val then gets copied from the calculate function to the anonymous function and then both of them are being uh, multiplied to produce a result and this result is being stored inside the uh, multiplication variable so ultimately we end up in here th with the alert function producing the product now the last thing of this chapter will be about returning an anonymous function we have looked at how to use the anonymous function independently we have looked at how to include it inside our uh, function uh, a function declarative statement when we are invoking that function like this invocation this is an uh, this is actually an invocation method because in here this is a function declaration you need to be clear about this because when we uh, create a function with this function keyword we're actually initializing this uh, we're actually declaring this function but it does not exist realistically inside the computer's memory but when we invoke it with values like this with this 10 12 and previously we had seen we have used 2 4 when we are invoking it we mean we are initializing it with values and then it gets stored inside the uh, memory so we are invoke uh, this is an invocation statement basically this is an invocation function invocation statement and this is a function declaration statement now finally we'll be looking at how to return an anonymous function inside a function declarative statement i'll be showing a very simple example for this uh last part so it won't be very practical but it would help you to understand how to include the anonymous function as in uh, along with the return statement inside this function declaration statement now we need this function keyword and we can use um, a name and identifier like what can it be um, new function let's name this as new function and uh, it will uh, it won't actually have any parameters we won't be passing anything for now it will be void perhaps so void actually means uh, it won't return anything but uh, sorry for using that phrase but we will be actually returning it but for now it's void so our function will have a return statement and that return statement will have a function an anonymous function that needs to be ended with a semicolon and inside this an anonymous function let's add the alert function so we're going to pass in a message in it so it can w we can 
write anything hello YouTube and uh, let's save this so first of all let's uh, store this new function that we created inside a variable which we can name as uh, return anonymous and let's include this new function inside it we are actually invoking this new function inside our uh, variable return anonymous so when we invoke it we are actually storing this alert uh, alert function that is deeply nested inside this uh, new function statement and uh, when we store this this is actually uh, getting stored inside the memory through the return anonymous variable now we can finally use this return ano return anonymous function as a as a function itself so it has turned itself into a function because of this uh, new uh, because of invoking this new function so what we have here is that uh, this real return anonymous function actually initializes it and when it initializes itself with this new value it finds that this value is nothing more than a function so it then copies it and makes itself to be a function similar to the new function that we created lately now let's invoke this return anonymous function and you can clearly see that JavaScript uh, uh, the a code editor perhaps shows us that it does not take any sort of parameters it must be left empty and let's uh, erase this part because we already have an alert function we don't want multiple alert functions to be producing results on the browser so let's save this and we immediately see that the browser loads and produces the result or the message that we gave it to produce and here it is hello YouTube so I hope you enjoyed this entire lesson and I would actually welcome you to uh, keep watching uh, my next chapters because they'll be helpful and I'll be moving on to uh, conditionals and loops in the next chapter and the chapter after, uh, after uh, that uh, chapter in which we discuss conditionals so I hope you're enjoying it please leave your comments be, uh, below and don't forget to subscribe, like and share my videos.